This week in the podcast, four cities in five days, up and down the Midwest, I talk hockey with PCO, and we get to the bottom of Bread Club with Satoshi Kojima. Enjoy it! Boom, boom. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It's Alright, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax, you're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling professional wrestling podcast it's a life podcast it's a personal journal it's an entryway to the minds and souls the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling i am your host my name is colt cabana i'm a national champion i'm a half-assed hockey connoisseur i am someone who does get uh, extremely sad when somebody in our profession passes away but most importantly i am a professional wrestler and i am sitting here live in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan support and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday, coltcommander.com, iTunes, Stitcher, however you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, tell a friend, tweet it out. The best way to support coltmerch.com, digitalcolt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, brand new micro brawlers in stock, children's books, and so much more, coltmerch.com, digitalcolt.com. Dot com. First off, uh, right off the bat, let's not bring it down, but I let's address uh, Silver King. If you did not know, if, I don't know if you've been hiding or whatnot, but uh, very sad to hear about Silver King. Passing away in the ring is like a, a story of the olden times. Uh, I'm aware it happened to Pero Aguaya Jr., and uh, it just recently, I mean, within this week, happened to Silver King. But for me... It's just a thing that doesn't happen in our lifetime, at least with people that I share the same level of profession with. I think of Ted DiBiase Jr.'s father or King Kong Kirk, just things I read in books or on the internet years ago. And it was something that we talked about in the car this week. I I texted a friend who was on the show with Silver King uh, saying that, you know, I wasn't a person of God or anything, but my thoughts were with uh, that person and the and Silver King and uh, his family. It's uh, sad. I've n- I've never been on a show with Silver King, but I love Silver King. I WCW. He was my guy. He was the first one I ever saw take a, a top rope reverse Frankensteiner from Rey Mysterio. And uh, you know, I I loved wrestling, but it's not like I knew anything about how wrestling worked. I just enjoyed watching it. But at that point, I was like, oh, that guy. He just did a thing that. People will cheer Rey Mysterio for, but that was the guy who did the thing. And then you get trained to wrestle, and then you learn how to wrestle, and then you learn to appreciate people like Silver King even more. So if I can dedicate a show to Silver King today, I will. Let's watch some of his matches on YouTube and uh, keep him alive in in our memory. Somebody being kept alive in our memory also was Tom McGee this week, Mary-Kate Anthony, who I've known since I was, I don't know, 21 years old. She dug up this old tape. She became a little star of her own. And I did not watch the match. I'm waiting for it at StarCast. I want to watch it with Tom McGee and Bret Hart as they do it at StarCast. I'll be at StarCast in Las Vegas next week. All my things are Friday. I'll be there Saturday and Sunday selling merch, but my things are Friday. I'm doing an eat and greet, a meet and greet, and then a live podcast after the Ric Flair roast. I did watch the documentary. Dave Meltzer made the statement that uh, it was stupid that him that he and myself were not in it. A, I would have, of course, loved to have been in it, but I do not hold any animosity or grudges or anything like that. I was told I was uh, talked about being in it, but then I was told uh, that uh, a doctor still works there and nobody wanted to ruffle any feathers. So that makes me a little bit sad. But listen, I did this podcast on... Stitcher Premium, three years ago about my obsession with Tom McGee and Bret Hart, the match itself. So it just makes me happy that it's out there in the world. And I could help a legend of a match in any way that I did or could. Most importantly, though, for me, I'm a pro wrestler. I do pro wrestling. This week, I commentated three shows and I wrestled on one. So come on in the van with me. Let's take a journey it was the War of the Worlds tour for Ring of Honor. We started off Wednesday night, a school night in Buffalo, New York, almost the old stomping grounds of Dalton Castle. You were being, Ooh, the thing. I, you get were, to, I get to talk into the thing. You were being summoned. Thank you. First of all, your outfit is wonderful as normal. I'm wearing a... Uh, Tell tur- me who you're wearing. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if you remember a little vet or a little fruit, big yellow cylinder thing. 
Banana Republic. Ah, uh, Cabana. My very first merchandise T-shirt was Cabana Republic. Ah, oh, it's amazing. Based Mine- off of Banana Republic, which was cool in 2000. In 2000, when I came up with the with the. Uh, Can you guess what uh, big corporation logo I used? It was a burger place. This oh, White, White Castle. Yeah. yeah. Dalton White Castle. Yeah, I crushed it. So we're in Buffalo tonight. Yes, this is pretty much home for me. That's why I've been. You've been summoned over here. Oh, all right. What do you want to know? How far were you from here? Ninety minutes. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, yeah. I would come up here, wrestle okay. at Empire State Wrestling. And guess who was the last person at the building today? Well, I don't live there anymore. I live in Albany, New York now. So that's four and a no five and a half oh. hours. Did you do that drive today? Yeah, I did that in a minivan all alone. It was really sad. What'd you do on the drive? Uh, I for about. 20 minutes, I accidentally listened to Glenn Beck, because the person who rented the van before me left it there, and I was like, I don't know how I don't know how to work this thing. It's not my phone. You were like, well, this is a long drive. I better figure this out. Yeah, and then in a rage, like I just started like sweat coming down. I'm just enraged. I, I finally pulled off to the first rest stop and paid ten dollars for uh, an auxiliary cable, because they. Oh, I forgot to add, there was no Bluetooth connection. I was gonna say you should have Bluetooth connected. Yeah, some. Some sort of monster rented me a, a vehicle that you can't connect your phone to, and I think that should be illegal. It is illegal. Well, then wh- who do I gotta call? Let's arrest somebody. Hook me up right with now. your lawyer friends. Oh, well, I spent enough time with those friends. Okay, you just gotta give me your, their number. They cost a lot of money. Do they? Do you call them on the phone, or you just you say their name into a mirror three times? I don't know how lawyers work. So, to change subjects, because I don't want to talk about lawyers anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm fun with legal talk. <laughs> I don't know if I was legally allowed to do this, but I had the boys on my podcast last week. Oh. And they were awful. <laughs> you can, you've always wondered why for the last five years they've never said a peep. Yeah. yeah. It's because I'm just saving it for their most, because what they say is so intellectually proper and perfect. <laughs> uh, I just don't think the crowd can handle it. I hope they don't get virgil what does that mean? Oh, when Virgil finally went on on his own. They're going to be sleeping in a subway somewhere, <laughs> selling T-shirts and posters. They just repeated. I, I was like, how you doing? Good. Yeah, good. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, everything all right. Uh, yeah, everything all right. Here's what I love about them. They say it in, like simultaneously. Like It's like in stereo. So if they're standing side by side, you hear the answers on, in both ears. Uh, no, they're adorable. That, that's part of the cuteness of them. They are, and you've known me. You knew how much I hated them at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I've kind of turned... You come around to liking them, and I've turned a corner, and now I hate them. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Maybe. That just shows where we, where we are, like, personality-wise. Right. Oh, my God. Am I you five years ago? Yeah, well, we're just total opposite sides of the spectrum. Oh, uh, I'm not looking forward to the legal trouble I'm going to have in a few years. Jesus If Christ. I'm following your path. <laughs> Thanks. And Dalton Castle is always wearing fun little outfits. It's nice to dress like an adult. I should be dressing like an adult. And my sponsor this week, Twillery, is helping me do that. Twillery also knows how money conscious I am. That's a good way to put it. I'm also pretty lazy and I hate leaving my apartment when I'm home. And Twillery making online clothes shopping super simple is a giant plus. The other plus is the shirts are comfortable, they're easy to care for, they look great, and they fit perfectly. Proprietary safe cotton technology that's using less harsh chemicals than other non-iron shirts, yet still giving them that safe, buttery, soft feel. And you heard that right, non-iron. Another plus in my quest of laziness. I was on the road five days this week. Twillery, they give me these shirts that I need because I throw them in my suitcase and then out they come just as good as new. Save more when you bundle them up. Get a $100 shirt for $55 when you buy in bulk. Twillery also has free shipping in the U.S. and free returns. Get $25 off your first shirt order by going to twillery.com slash cult. Enter the promo code cult at checkout. That's T-W-I-L-L-O-R-Y dot com slash cult. The promo code is cult. and You'll get $25 off your first shirt order. And maybe you could look as good as Dalton Castle or me. But I, you know, I'm nothing special. I'm just a man who gets in a car with a car full of wrestlers And we head from Buffalo, New York on a Wednesday to Toronto, Canada on a Thursday at the Ted Reeves Arena. Again, just commentating for me. One of my favorite memories of Ted Reeves Arena, we've been there many times, is in 2009 
they had a trash strike, which meant the city of Toronto, specifically around Tedry's Arena, smelled so bad as nobody was taking the trash away, and there was just bags and bags and bags of trash all over the city. And now you say to yourself, Colt, what makes you a good wrestler? And to you person saying that, I say it's because I am a topical wrestler. Just like a comedian, I'm a topical wrestler. So I saw what was in my surroundings, much like the Wrestling Road Diaries 3, when I looked up and we saw a balloon and me and Kiku Taro, we, we put in some balloon spots. Myself and Joey Ryan, this is before he was big sleaze Joey Ryan. I think just, I don't know what he was, regular wrestling Joey Ryan. I gimmicked up. Spoiler alert for all you ROH 2009 fans out there. I gimmicked up a bunch of bags of trash. I rolled out of the ring. I pretended to go to the outside. I came back with the trash. And then I beat the fuck out of him with the trash and went right to the finish. And I beat him. And that was such a fun match, a fun memory, and the idea of going off the script and wrestling for the moment. And at this moment, 2019, fuck, that was 10 years ago, 2019, uh, we were at a hockey arena in Canada, so let's talk to the Canadian PCO. So we're here in Canada, in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, but we're at the Ted Rees Arena. Have you ever been to the Ted Rees Arena? Never been to Ted Rees uh, Arena. So it's a hockey destination. Yeah. And you're a Canadian man. And so I was thinking, like, I've done some Canada tours where we do a lot of, like, hockey venues. And I'd imagine as a Canadian, at, for the first times of your career that's all you did yeah it's right? yeah, and it's, it's pretty special yeah it's always special for me because then um, grew up a big hockey fan still i am a big Wait, hockey but there, but i was doing these little shows in front of like 50 people at a hockey rink oh, you're talking about giant stadiums i'm talking about like little you know like america like like vfw halls or legions that's where you have wrestling i assume that in canada it's only at hockey rinks no not only in hockey rinks but I've got up early a few times when I was a kid, like when I was like three, four, five, six years old and got up at four or five in the morning for hockey practice yeah. in a hockey rink. So yeah. it's very familiar to me, a hockey rink. I really like hockey rinks. Yeah, so yeah it's cool. And you never did wrestling shows, indie shows at hockey places? Of course I did. Yeah. Um, many times it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a weird venue because it's they're always so big and then you put them in the middle of the hockey rink and then there's nobody there, right? Like, it's so big. The thing is, like, you know, sometimes during the, the <laughs> summer season, uh, there's not as... It used... No, back in the day, there wasn't as much hockey during the summer season as it was today. So they used to rent it for cheap. Right. But, 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 but now uh, hockey is something that goes like 12 months a year. So they're, it's not the same anymore. But yeah, it, it was very accessible and very cheap to rent for promotion, right. wrestling those, promotion. Those were like the parks of America, just easy, easy access. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. exactly. But uh, you're a huge hockey fan. Yeah, I am. I am. Who's your team? Well, uh, deep down my heart, I'm a Hab fan, but I like a lot of teams. I really like. I really dig the uh, Golden Knights in Vegas. I I don't is know. Is that a team? Yeah. I know nothing about. <laughs> yeah, Vegas. All I know is NHL '94 on Genesis. I know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not into like video games. video games at all. But but the Golden Knights weren't a, weren't a team on NHL '94. Maybe the, uh, because they just started last year. Oh, well, that's they went all the way, you know, far, like almost to the uh, the final. Did you ever wrestle at a place that had? You must have like those big venues in WWF and WCW. That was like where I don't know the Red Wings played or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I, the, when I got signed the first time, I freaked out because. I was wrestling in all the arenas, like the, before they rebuild the, the 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 other arenas for new ones, like like the the goal, the old um, Boston Garden, the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Uh, it was the Shark Tank in San Jose, mm -hmm. uh, the Forum in California, uh, Los Angeles. Um, Detroit, Joe Louis Arena, all those places, yeah. That you, was, it was so great for me because it, as a kid, I was watching wrestling and also was watching like hockey and all the Stanley Cups and all the major match playoff games and season games were all in those buildings. So 
being able to do all those buildings as a wrestler was like a dream come true. And you, st what year did you start? Uh, I was like around 88, around, you know, I, I may have wrestled a few matches before that. I don't count th those years because I broke in, but I didn't have like many match per, many matches per year. So, but like, that's when like, now all the arenas are so super new and super nice, but like those years probably when you were doing the Joe Lewis and all the, that's like when they were like, they would cover up. Right, they were covered up with boards, and you could still feel it cold in the ground. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The old, the old school arena. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't like they they, they couldn't melt the ice. Yeah. It was just boards on top of the uh, of the ice. And which I'd imagine, if you're a hockey person, like it's probably annoying as a wrestler. But if you're a hockey person, you're like, ah, fuck, this is cool. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I really thought it was cool. And plus, I had the chance to. What was weird about it? It's like most of the. Hockey players were fans of wrestling. Oh, would they come to the shows? They, they, like I remember at one time we were at the uh, NASA Coliseum and uh, Uniondale, and like four or five of the players like were waiting in the back just to talk with us. And then another time, like I met like Scotty Bowman, who was like the greatest coach of the NHL. Like he was a big fan of us, and and all over the place. Did some people know him and some people didn't? Like there's always like. Some of the wrestlers are like, I don't know who the fuck these guys are. And then there's you who's going crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Some of the wrestlers didn't know who they were. Like, I remember one time I was in Montreal and Andres Savard was the GM of the Montreal Canadiens. He was walking backstage and nobody knew who he was. <laughs> and you're like a little girl, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I was like, what? That's the GM of the Montreal Canadiens. Nobody even pay attention to him. <laughs> right. Probably some of them are like, who are these marks? Get him the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From there... We left Toronto. We left Canada. Oh, you better believe I was brought into immigration. Because when you're flagged for lying to the Canadian border in 2006, it's never going to get off your record. Ever. Canada. Come on. There's drug dealers. There's, well, mainly drug dealers. And I'm still flagged for lying about wrestling in Winnipeg in 2006? Boo. I still went in. And now we're heading on down to Grand Rapids, Michigan. I mean, right now I'm at, I'm at home. But at that moment in this podcast, I was on the road. And on the road means I have to ship out merch when I get home. Thankfully, it's easier than ever for me with my sponsor, Stamps.com. It's not just a sponsor, but it's a part of my small business, I guess you would call it. It's part of how I make money and support myself. It makes my life easier easier. I'm not lugging all these packages to the post office anymore. I'm just doing it from my apartment. I use my own computer, my own printer. I bought these printing sheets on Amazon, Amazon Prime to be exact. It takes me basically minutes, pack it all together. I print it out. I walk it downstairs and I leave it next to the mailbox. The mail carrier takes it away and that's it. You can be doing the same thing if you're a wrestler or if you're selling stuff online or even a giant warehouse with thousands of packages. Also with stamps.com, you get five cents off first class stamps and up to 40% off priority. And you can print any postage for any package for any class. Right now, you friendly listener can get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Colt. That's stamps.com, top right mic, enter Colt. And we'll enter Grand Rapids, Michigan, very close to where I graduated college from, Kalamazoo, about an hour away. My brother graduated college from Allendale, Michigan, a college called Grand Valley State University. So I know the area, but I've never been to this arena. And to ring announcer Bobby Cruz, they all look the same. Bobby, you want to explain where we are? Middle of nowhere, Michigan. You want to tell us what the arena looks like? Nice high school gym. You're continuing to eat. This is your time. Oh, it does smell good, though. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. A, a high school gin in no, the middle no, of no, nowhere. No. It's a nice arena. Is it? Yeah. And Grand Rapids seems nice. I, I thought we've been here before, but I was told no. What, this building is called the Wizard Building? What is it? No, um, Delta Center. Delta something. Yeah. Delta. <laughs> You just come where they show up. I'll, I'll know it when I go out there. Hey, I saw Nick Lendl is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is he here? Who is the other Ring of Honor announcer when you, you don't show up? You want the real reason or you want the reason that I think? Well, give me both. The real reason is he's trying to edge his way in and push me out. Of course. Well, that's what everyone's trying and to do. And the reason I think that he told me is he's just here to do the pre-show hosting announcements, plugging website, 
plugging merch, plugging the uh, meet and greet. He's the and host. He's the host, arena host. And they then, flew him out for host no, duties. He, no, he drove from Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, okay. And then, um, and then he'll announce the doc match. I'm sorry, the what? The doc. What's a duck match? <laughs> the doc match. Holy <laughs> shit, are you Boston? <laughs> He's going to announce a doc match. Yeah. Unbelievable. How come when you announce your Boston doesn't come out so much? I don't know, but thank God it doesn't because <laughs> people will make fun of me more like you're doing now. <laughs> well, when you announced me in WWE. I announced you in WWE. I know. I'm saying that's, you know, maybe it was too Boston-y and I was too Jewy. <laughs> no, I don't think that was that's it. That's why we didn't, neither of us stuck. I just think it was bad timing, but everything else is good. For you or me? Both. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, what else do we want to talk about on this podcast? It was very last time you got very mad at me that I uh, I did it as you were walking out the door. Yeah. You gave me all these years I've waited to be on your glorious podcast, and you gave me like thirty seconds as I had to go to the ring. Like you did it on purpose. Well, I'm here backstage before the show talking to you now. Yeah, and that's the other thing. People can't see this, obviously. You're recording this with me in the dark. You don't even want people to know you're recording this with me. You don't. Well, want I don't even want. I don't want to make eye contact with you. Is what? Okay. I mean, I'm staring at you. You're looking forward. You're not even looking at me. Because that's how I think. That's how I like. I'm looking at the hard cam. How long? How, how long you been announcing, Bobby? Uh, twenty five years. Holy shit! Yeah. Who was the first promotion? Uh, it was a place called New England Wrestling, in the spring of 1994. Good yeah. lord! Yeah. How did you How did you get the gig? Um, so I always wanted to be a ring announcer, so I sent a bunch of letters out to different indie companies around New England, and they were the closest one that got back to me. Went to the tryout. Who was the main event for that show? Oh, God. Bad Boy Tony Rumble? No, 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 I never announced him. I don't, I don't remember who the main event was. Were, were you on all these shows with Tony Atlas? Were you on the show that Tony Atlas was on in MTV, True Life, I Want to Be a Pro Wrestler? Mm. Nope, not at all. No, I, I did some shows with Tony, but not, not a lot. Why, why are you asking about Tony Atlas? I don't know. When I think of that area, all I think about is MTV True Life, I Want to Be a Pro Wrestler, and Tony Atlas having that girl uh, yeah. work really stiff and then step on his face. Yes. I just saw that clip yesterday, actually, or the day before somebody had that clip. I'd never seen it before. Who, who else? So who, when you think of like 90s, late 90s indie Boston wrestling, who do you think of? Uh, good question. Well, Scott Taylor, um, Rick Fuller, uh, Steve Bradley. Um, so you were on all those shows with a young Scotty Too Hottie. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All those. So yeah, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of good times. A lot of experience. I I mean, I was stuck in New England until Carino got me out. So you know, it's uh, Who, whose gig did you take over here? <laughs> Steven DeAngelis. Oh. <laughs> so Nick Nick Lendl's going to be doing trying to do the same thing. Yeah, it, but uh, the difference is with me, I'll I'll exit graciously. But Steven DeAngelis wants me dead to this day. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well. It, it's, it's my fault that they wanted to go with me instead. God forbid, you know. Well, I like Steven DeAngelis. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, next question. My contract's up at the end of the year. If, if they come to me in December and say, hey, we want to go with Nick. He's younger, blah, blah, blah. What am I going to do, get mad at Nick? It's ridiculous. No, but I want you here forever. Well, it wouldn't be as fun if you weren't here. I appreciate that. So I'll sign. You can take some of my money. <laughs> I doubt that. Knowing you, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's a nice offer. Thank nice you. gesture. Thank you. All right, have fun in Grand Rapids tonight. Okay. We got well, to be fair, as Paul Turner, our referee, the one of the best referees, he was on this episode a couple weeks ago, he is heading to uh, AEW. He gave a, a goodbye speech in the locker room, and someone says they're dropping like flies. So I don't know. Maybe Bobby Cruz is uh, is next. Not necessarily going to AEW, but maybe he's gone. I hope not. He's great. I hope the weirdness of Bobby Cruz came out in that talk. But now he's going to listen to this, and he's going to be like, are you saying I'm weird? Colt, you saying I'm weird? How's that Boston accent? Good? All right. We're in Michigan. And uh, this is something I don't get to do often, but I thought this would be interesting for uh, all you folks listening is, you know, there's referees and ring announcers and all different types of people. Ring of Honor lost another great, a backstage dude named Bird, who's been there for so long, uh, another unsung hero of the wrestling community, and uh, he will be missed. And another unsung hero of the wrestling community is Leonard Brand, a, a photographer who's just been there throughout my whole career, just taking pictures of me. And uh, you don't get to hear their stories that often. So uh, let's hear from Leonard. Hi, Colt. How are you? I'm good. Uh, well, I guess it's a staple when we're in Michigan. We run into you, right? I know. That seems to be the deal. Uh, first time in 
probably decades I've been this close to home, five minutes from home. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't think I've ever wrestled in Grand Rapids. Yeah, you and Punk did back in the day. We wrestled in Lansing. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we did do some Grand Rapids. I think early on. See, I love that you know that. I I couldn't tell you the date, though. (laughs) Yeah, but at least you know that more than I know. Maybe, when did you guys start? Nah, 99, 2000. I was going to say 99, 2000, yeah. 2001. So it's a staple that you're here taking pictures. I am. In all Michigan shows. Yeah, yep, almost every weekend. And um, I just watched you take uh, pictures of some of the Japanese guys, so I have I think I said to you last time, I was just like, God, who do you... You just take pictures of everybody, so... Yeah. And you were telling me, like, the earliest shows, because I was like, who was the oldest guy on the earliest show you did? If that makes sense. Um, as, as far as a fan and like taking pictures from ringside, Sheik and Bobo Brazil, mm. Mighty Igor, Mark Lewin, all those guys, like maybe 73, 74. Um, I started taking seriously pictures like in 1980 when I was like a 10th grader in high school. <laughs> you know, on a on an Eddie Farhat spot show that was, you know, Eddie Jr. Would you do Kobo? Um, their last shows, I think, were probably 1980. Oh, okay. When, like, Dusty and um, Terry Funk and Dory Funk and Mark Loon were coming up on their own dime, and that was after she did his face turn, you know, and teamed with Bobo, mm. you know, which just kind of, that was kind of the last nail, I think. And then just when you look back on things, and just, like, there's a, a, your sheet up here, you got your lights, you're always taking your pictures. Um, like, just who are some guys that you look back and you're like, fuck, I took their pictures, like... Oh. Just about anybody. I mean, like, even like Tommy Rich back in the day, you know, in the early 80s, there was nobody hotter. You know, when George Wrestling had come here, it was the stadium arena then. You know, and they'd come once a month, and there was nobody hotter back then. Sexually. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, I think a lot of the chicks, I don't know, maybe you should ask Missy Hyatt that. <laughs> Missy Hyatt could probably tell you some stories. And then, uh, tell me the biggest dickhead or weird stories that come to mind. Uh, there's all kinds of weird stories. I had a weird story with Honky Tonk Man one time where he, uh, was bitching at my then wife about selling pictures and she didn't even know who he was. You know, she didn't know him from anybody. And and he bitched her out in front of the fans and got her crying. And I had a little confrontation with him in the back and he told me he was a freaking superstar. And I'm like, you ain't shit. You drew 65 people to Flint. And I, th- I wadded up his two bucks and threw it in his face. Oh. Needless to say, they dragged me out because he probably would have beat my ass. And, <laughs> um, now we laugh about it. Now, now he's cool about it. Um, that was probably in the early 2000s. Hey, and, protecting that merch stand. Yeah, I can appreciate yeah, that. Yep, yeah, yeah, protecting the business. <laughs> and I got that. You know, I understand the professional courtesy, but my wife at that time did not. And uh, she had sold a little four by six picture of him and he didn't think it was cool. And, you know, that's an unwritten rule for me and probably a written rule somewhere when you know there are other guys there trying to sell their merch you don't yeah. sell stuff for them honey i told you to hide the honky <laughs> pictures he's here <laughs> well years later i saw him at soren eagle casino on a spot show on a jerry gray show of all guys and uh, uh he said yeah i knew this one fat dude one time that he wadded up and threw two dollars in my face and so you're I, memorable <laughs> i just got to remember you know i just got to raise my hand and he goes that was you and i'm like yeah yeah have you ever done a, a thing like where you i mean because you've been, you've probably taken you probably have 20,000 pictures of wrestlers, right? Like Oh, way, way more than that. Way I got, more. Yeah, I got two man caves at home, two bedrooms, and then I got a 10 by 20 storage unit packed with S- just not pictures, but, you know, posters, uh, programs, flyers, newspaper clippings. So do you want to do, like, a, an exhibit or something? Or? Um, I don't know. Maybe I mean, one day? Yeah, I gotta, I'm got. i trying to get it organized to where it could be, like, you know, on display, you know, where I wouldn't be ashamed to have some. I mean, it's not like a hoarder thing or anything, but... I think you know. it'd be cool, like, to show, like, an exhibit downtown Detroit or something and show all the pictures you've taken yeah. over of yeah. Detroit wrestling. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, there's another guy. Um, I don't know if you know Brad McFarlane, Johnny Bradford. I know Johnny Bradford, yeah. of course. Yeah. He was um, at a show I was at last night in Detroit, and and uh, that guy, he had a heck of a collection. He used to do Georgia shows and, and I mean, just all over. And, he was and, a manager when I came in. Yeah, yep, yep. And he still does for some of the Detroit indies, but he had a large collection of photos, and I got a lot of stuff from him. And a lot of my collections, not only my own stuff, but stuff I get from other people like Jill McKee, you know mm-hmm. Jill. Of course. In the early 80s and late 70s, I would befriend people, you know, that took pictures. Like there was a guy named Bruce Weiner that took him in St. Louis, and then I'd find somebody in Florida. You know, Gene Gordon was in North Carolina. All those guys were my idols. You know, the biggest one is probably George Napolitano, you know, in New York. And I've, I've never met him. And that's kind of my bucket list. I'd well, he's a nice guy. You should come. He comes to some of the New York shows. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Make I, your way out. Well, cool, man. I'll uh, keep on repping Detroit, and we okay. appreciate your work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> As part of the War of the Worlds tour, goes on some of the lure i use that word twice probably not correctly in this podcast uh is the new japan wrestlers they come over they're a part of it they're a a bit of a draw if not a big draw and i thought it was only fitting that uh you know i sneak one of them on it's not always the best english but if they had me on their podcast in japan i would be the worst so 
always more power to them. And today, Satoshi Kojima comes on, who, I don't know, I would say is the best. He is the best. If you like his wrestling, you'll love him backstage. <laughs> Here is the man who founded the Bread Club. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, first time Grand Rapids? Yes. This is Kojima. First time Michigan? Yeah, maybe first time. I think so. Hi. How, uh, when was first time in America? When first time in America? Maybe I think uh, nine, uh, 20, 2002. Oh, right? Philadelphia? Yeah, maybe, yes, a long time ago. Same show. Oh, same show, me, me, me too. You, Homicide? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it's this time. Me, Hanma. Wow, how? Yeah, yes, yes. tag team. Yeah. Mi Miyamoto and Hanma? Yeah, see, yes, 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 yes yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yes, yeah. wow. Same. We are same age. Same age, yes. Me and you. Uh, me and you, same age? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, please tell me Bread Club. Oh, Bread Club? Yeah. You love bread? Yes, I love. Uh, everywhere, every time, uh, I'm looking for bread, right? What's your favorite bread? Uh, I, I like sweet, sweet, many, many kind of sweet, right? Mm. Then, and uh, uh, more, most favorite is, you know, uh, hard, hard bread, you know. Mm. Like a ba baguette, how do you say? Baguette? Baguette, yeah. Good, I love good English. Baguette. You, what about bagel? Bagel, yeah, I like too. Like everything, yeah, everything. Okay. Kind of be, uh, kind of bread, I like, I love. You are leader of Bread Club, yes? Yes. Yes. Who is number two? Uh, number two, maybe uh, Korto Kabana song, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. My, stom my stomach. <laughs> yes, please. You see, big stomach. Oh, yeah. Bre I love big, bread. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Very good, Arigato, thank you. Good, thank you. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm in. I'm in. Or he just uh, didn't understand what I was saying, and he recognized that I was asking for a name, and he knows my name, so it's a win either way. I was going to bring him a bagel from Chicago, but I just forgot. Upper Crust Bagels in Deerfield, where I was born, are the best. He would have loved it. Why didn't I bring him an Upper Crust Bagel? Uh, well, the next day we did go to Chicago, and uh, I thought we would talk to the one person who represents the city the best. That's me. I, it's just, uh, I, I'm a Chicago guy. I wrestled James Storm. We went to a 15-minute draw. The Briscoe brothers came out afterwards. They beat me down. Nick Aldis made the save. Billy Corrigan was giving me some notes. I'm probably going to go on tour with Billy Corrigan now in the Smashing Pumpkins. So if my wrestling schedule kind of calms down a little bit, it's because I'm doing a worldwide tour with the Smashing Pumpkins. Just, uh, you know, me and Nick Aldis doing the opening match in front of 20,000 people every night. And then uh, that'll be the main event. And then the encore will be the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, none of that is true. It's sad that I feel that I have to say that, but I, I will. If I was on tour with the Smashing Pumpkins, you would hear all about it in my plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, the best way that you can support coldmerch.com, digitalcold.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Cold Cabana, Facebook slash Cold Cabana, my storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new. They're ad free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe your promoter won't put me on your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. That's where you can find my P.O. box, Christine and Bird. They sent me two great cards. Thank you so much. And congratulations to Landon. I hope you're still wrestling bud or not whatever whatever makes you happy upcoming saturday and sunday may 18th and 19th walper in germany facebook forever wrestling memorial day weekend in las vegas nevada starcast.com and again on that friday i will be doing a 10 a.m breakfast 2 p.m meet and greet 8 p.m podcast i believe just check the website friday may 31st san antonio texas river city wrestling.net saturday and sunday june 1st and 2nd seattle and portland are ohwrestling.com Wednesday, June 5th St. Paul, Minnesota in a Jewish temple Facebook First Wrestling Friday, June 7th Denver, Colorado LuchaLibreLaughs.com Friday and Saturday June 14th and 15th Cleveland, Ohio AIWrestling.com Wednesday, June 19th Worcester, Mass Beyond Wrestling Online.com Thursday, June 20th Brooklyn, New York WrestlingOutlaws.net Saturday, June 22nd New Orleans, Louisiana 
WildcatWrestling.com, Sunday, June 23rd, Austin, Texas, WrestleCircus.com, Friday and Saturday, June 28th and 29th, Baltimore and Philly, ROHWrestling.com, Sunday, June 30th, Hamilton, Canada, Alpha-1Wrestling.com, intro music is by the ukulele teacher on YouTube, outro music by Super Fun, Yeah, Yeah, Rocket Ship, podcast cover art and design by Jimmy Lee, photo by James Musselwhite, thanks to PCO, Dalton Castle, Bobby Cruz, Leonard Brand, and Satoshi Kojima for coming on the show. Sponsors, HighSpots.com and the High Spots Network, the VOD service that has brand new $5 wrestlings, just wrestling shows in general, PWGs, Best Friends, AMA knee pads, they have gear, wrestling masks, and even a wrestling ring. Also, OneHourTees.com, they help run ProWrestlingTees.com. I got a store on there, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Colt Cabana. Heading over to Germany, folks. I remember I did such a fun podcast once in Germany. It was for WXW. I haven't been there. I haven't been over for WXW in years. Who knows if I'm even welcomed anymore. Uh, This week, I'll be going for Forever Wrestling. And I hope it's forever fun because I will be joined by Grado. I'm more than sure he'll be on the podcast next week. And until then, this has been the Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Thanks.